Here we are, guys. The last Curly Girl interview that I have on the books. Hey there, guys. Welcome back to my channel. And if you're brand new here, hi, my name's Courtney, and we have been doing a series here on this channel of Curly Girl interviews. Most of the time, I do everything I can to share all the knowledge I have about my hair to help you embrace your waves and curls. But turns out that not everybody's head of hair is exactly the same. And it's been so much fun getting to talk to all these different wavy curly girls, learning what works for different people. Today, we have the absolute pleasure of getting to chit chat with Allie, wavy curly from Instagram. So she's killing the Instagram game, you guys. And I love her personality, her sense of humor, and her hair knowledge is amazing. So without further ado, let's get into this interview. Hey there, Allie, how are you? Hey, Courtney, I'm doing great, how are you? Good, thank you so much for being willing to come on and share your story. Of course, I'm so excited to be here. Thank you for asking me to do this. I really appreciate it. Where can people find you on the internet? Oh my goodness, everywhere. <laughs> um, so I'm a little bit on YouTube, a little bit on Instagram. I'm trying to be like the cool kids on TikTok. I'm still trying to figure that out, but TikTok's I'm there. hard. It is hard. It just it, there's a lot of creativity, and I don't understand how to edit anything. So I'm just posting stuff as I figure it out. <laughs> there you go. Well, I'm guys, really there. Yeah. Well, guys, y'all know the drill by now. Y'all see that little drop down arrow right below me? Click it. Push it. Open the description box. Hit show more. And you will see all of Allie's links. Seriously, go check her out. She is amazing. Why don't you go ahead and describe your hair type? So I am more on the wavy side on certain days. I have a couple of curls in my hair, but we are really looking at kind of the 2B, 2C, uh, medium to high porosity. I do have fully bleached hair underneath this uh, brunette color. This is my natural color, but up till about here, it's probably all bleached down. So I'm about medium porosity through the crown and then it goes into high porosity. So it's about mixed. Uh, I have coarse hair and about, oh, I don't know if I said this, yeah, medium density. So I don't have like really thick hair or anything. Um, I try to make it look like I do with going for volume in my wash days, but I about would have guessed you density. were high density. That's interesting. Yeah, no, no. I think the layers helped. <laughs> You're the queen of volume. I can't, I try, oh, I cannot get that kind of alley volume. Honestly, I think the biggest thing that's helped is getting a really layered haircut. And I mean, if you look at this top layer and the bottom layer, they're drastically different in length. They are, but your ends are still full. I find that when I go too far with the layers, I get those stringy, straggly uh, ends that are yeah. so attractive. <laughs> <laughs> It'll definitely get there. It'll get there if I'm on like day three or day four. If I'm really pushing it, my ends are like, come on, sweetie, get in the shower. <laughs> I love that. So you kind of wash your hair every three ish days as a general. Yeah, I'd say rule? about yeah, I I I'd say roughly about two times a week. I was originally doing about two to three times a week, but I very much so just listen to my hair and my scalp. If it if it's feeling rough, if it's just not working out, I'm just gonna jump in the shower and wash it. So yeah, it's a it's about twice a week. So what got you interested in wearing? your waves and curls. What got you into all of this? Yeah. So, uh, my son, actually, um, my firstborn, he was born with thick, black, long, full head of hair. I mean, like sideburns to his chin at birth. And everybody swore to me that he would lose it because that's pretty common for babies to be born yeah. with hair. And then it just kind of falls out. But his never did. And actually what happened, it just kept growing and it started to curl. And he had these big, beautiful, full barrel curls. Um, mm. yeah, and I mean, just stunning. And my husband has shorter hair. So for us, you know, kind of have like the sides buzzed and 
all of that. So he couldn't really tell if there was any texture or pattern to his hair. So I knew that my hair, when it dried, it was kind of frizzy, kind of puffy. And I always tell people this to this day, if you think your hair is just frizzy and puffy, maybe just try some of these application techniques and see what happens. Um, but I Add digress. some gel so, on some wet hair. See what, see what's under yes. Just give it a little scrunch and see what happens. <laughs> um, but yeah, I digress. So my son's hair started to get really curly and my caregiver at the time had really long curly hair. And she kept telling me, you should really try this. I'm, I'm so curious. This is where your son got it. So I started going down the rabbit hole and I think I found, and I'm sure you know what photo I'm talking about. I feel like this is kind of this iconic image for me in my um, decision to make this step was I went down a rabbit hole on Pinterest and I saw this don't ever give up grid by Dominique Power Dummy on Instagram. And I, I was like, there is see that wait on Instagram. I saw it not on Pinterest though. I think it's got shared over to Pinterest. Somebody must have pinned it to a curly board or something, Got uh, it. but I'd seen it on Pinterest and it navigated me to her Instagram page. Yeah. And I was like, what on earth? She, her hair used to look, that's what my hair looks like now. So I decided to jump in the shower and I fell down a hole of um, curly Susie YouTube videos. That's kind of where I, I learned my first couple of wash days. And I made a ton of mistakes and I was just kind of shocked by the way my hair was responding to how this was working. So I promised myself, okay, if I'm going to pick up a set of products, I need to promise myself at least six months of honest effort of trying this. So I'm going to follow yeah. the curly girl method to the T strict Ooh. rules as much as I possibly can for six months. So what were the guidelines, the set of rules that you, you were following of strict curly girl? From what I remember, because this was about three years ago now, um, I was washing with cold water or cool water. So I was kind of flipped upside down, washing my hair upside down. I wasn't doing any type of brushing. Um, I wasn't using sulfates or silicones. Um, I was trying out things like uh, rice water rinses okay. and um, leaving conditioner in my hair. I tried doing co-wash and I immediately realized that does not work for me. I gave it a couple of tries. I was like, absolutely not. I look like a drowned rat. My hair permanently looks wet because it was just over moisturized. Yeah. Um, but I was also in this very weird transition phase of not just my hair transitioning, but I was pregnant at the time. So I started my journey four months pregnant. And then I was <sighs> having, my hair wasn't responding as it would normally anyway. Mm -hmm. So it was nice and big and full. And then once I had my baby at the six month mark is when I promised myself get to that six month mark. I had just finally had one wash day that I really, really, really loved. And I was like, wow, that actually took the full six months. I wonder how much further I could keep this going. So it was really my son that inspired me and um, kind of following some strict rules to kind of learn the rules first so I can learn how to break them and make them work for me to get to where I'm at now. Absolutely. The reason I ask about the curly girl method is because I feel like you and I have been doing this a similar length of time. And when I first started looking into it, the curly girl method was defined, no sulfates, no silicones, no drying alcohols, which kind of opened the door to let you use a low poo to cleanse your hair with. But yeah. recently, I believe it's, I believe it was last year, Lorraine Massey, the founder of the curly girl method came out and was like, that's not the curly girl method. And she redefined <laughs> it. So I was wondering, did you go uber strict, which is washing your hair once a week with only conditioner and only using a gel, no brushes ever. I mean, I, I like my brush. I, I do brush styling. Yeah. I, like that. I do too. I don't, I always tell people I don't have a wash day if I don't have my Denman brush. Um, <laughs> I also, I need, because my hair's so long, I need to detangle it while it's dry before I jump into the shower and I have to use a brush. Yeah. I do so gently, but yeah. Um, but to that, to the point of being strict curly girl, yeah, I, I tried doing the, you know, conditioner only and using gel and following the ingredients of what you can and can't use, no drying yeah. alcohols. I think those are still things I pay attention to, to make sure that I'm not causing any damage to my hair, but there's a million other things that I'm doing. There's thermal damage by being out in the sun. There's mechanical right. damage for me pulling my hair up too tight. So uh, once I kind of figured out what I needed to do to start getting those results that I really wanted, I started to find not shortcuts, but different 
techniques, different roads to take to, you know, do it in the amount of time that I want to do it in, use the types of products that I want to use. Um, something that I was just thinking about when I was washing my hair earlier is I had always lived by this idea because someone at some point told me that you should always apply your hardest, hard, your hardest hold styler last. Yeah. I always apply foam last. So I put my gel on and then I do a foam and I, yeah. I always try to think about why am I making the decision to do this? Why do I think this is working? So that when somebody asks me, I can better communicate it to them. Yeah. And I think it's because the way that I'm putting foam on last and scrunching it in, it's, it's kind of like a wet foam mm -hmm. um, where it kind of helps bring some of my clumps back together. So if I'm scrunching a lot with the gel and I microplop, sometimes those strands of hair can go a little yeah. bit astray, but by glazing that last layer of foam on is like an extra little bit of insurance before I start drying, my hair kind of pulls together, the clumps form a little bit better, it starts to get a little bit shinier. And doing little things like that to modify your routine and listening to your hair, I think is what makes the biggest difference in having this kind of wavy, curly journey with your hair. What would you say the biggest obstacle is that you had to work through and figure out because we all hit that wall when we're starting this process we things are going pretty well we're kind of beginning to learn the things and then we run into a big old roadblock that we have to figure out because everybody's hair is different what was yours yeah um you know i was thinking about this and i kept coming back to the same answer and i wasn't sure if this is necessarily the answer that um maybe somebody would be looking for in terms of, you know, I struggled with this technique or I struggled yeah. with using this type of product. And it was really to stop paying attention to what I thought my hair should look like. Um, stop trying to chase after other people's hair. You know, I think when we kind of jump on this journey, there's a lot of similarities in the, the dry results that people have kind of this shiny, clumpy, dry hair. And I realized I really love volume and I really love touching my hair. So when I started to achieve those results that I was chasing, I completely disliked them. I was getting this like kind of very defined, but like a very flat look. And it didn't, it's not that it looked bad. It just didn't feel like me. So I wasn't carrying my hair around with confidence and I just didn't feel like it fit my personality. So it was about a year and a half in, so about halfway so far, I'm about three years in where I was just looking at pictures and like, why does this look so beautiful on her or him? And for me, I don't like it. It was kind of a moment of reflection and like the light bulb went off of, well, then stop doing it. <laughs> it seems like such an obvious answer. And I think a lot of the stuff that we do ends up being a pretty obvious answer, but it took for me to get to that point and kind of hit that wall and be like, okay, I got there, but. I'm not happy yeah. after a year and a half. I just don't like the way that this is turning out. Um, but it's not that I wanted to go straighten my hair again either. So it was just kind of a moment of clarity to, and when I always tell people I'm so repetitive on my page, I probably get rather annoying to people who've been following me for an extended period of time where I'm like, just do what works for you. Just be you yeah. and do what works for you because following strict curly girl or, you know, using all the sulfates and silicones and drying alcohols and I love hairspray. Like if you got to yeah. do that to make your hair that you have to wear at the end of the day, work out and give you that confidence that you want and you desire, then you, you have to do it that way. I feel like learning this curly girl method, learning how to care for waves and curls gives you so much knowledge on how to make informed decisions about your hair. I yeah. remember thinking that I wasn't doing anything wrong to my hair by ripping a brush through it. You know, I, I didn't think that I was hurting my hair. Yeah. I thought my hair was just bad hair because it was tangly and I need to punish it by brushing it yeah. <laughs> aggressively. Now my yeah. mindset is so different because I have gone through this healthy hair journey. I figured out, oh, oh, the tangles were my fault. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I know it, it. It makes me so sad when people say that because I felt the same way as that. You, I just have bad hair. Yeah. You know, when I'd see my mom has curly hair and my sister has curly hair, but I kind of got the genetics of the men on my side of the family. And my brother has the straight brown hair and my dad has straight brown hair. So I thought I just got like this middle cocktail of that kind of straight brunette hair versus my mom and my sister who are curly blondes. And I'm like, I got left behind. What happened? I guess I just yeah. don't have good hair. 
So when I hear people say that, it, it makes me feel, feel sad. I'm like, you have fantastic hair. You just haven't figured out how to make it work for you yet. Yeah. So what does your travel routine look like? Because when you travel with straight hair versus traveling with curly hair, that looks pretty different. Yeah. And honestly, I do both. <laughs> it yes. depends on what I'm traveling <laughs> for and for how long. So for a good example, I, we just went home for the holidays. We were going to be in the car a lot. We were bouncing around quite a bit. And I just knew I wasn't going to have time to be doing my hair. I didn't want to pay attention to my hair. I wanted to pay attention to my kids and my family. So I just did a blowout and I wore it for eight days, which I wow. can't do that. I can't do that. I mean, my scalp was screaming at me. It was like, okay. please knock it off and wash your hair. Um, but when I am uh, going on a travel routine, and I'm bringing products with me. I mean, normally what I use at home, it's pretty straightforward. I think for those who are already existing in the, this kind of wavy, curly, kinky, coily communities, like we, from the outside, look like we use a lot of products. But when I say I use a curl cream, a gel, and a foam, like that's pretty straightforward to me. It's really basic. Yeah. But if you say that to someone who doesn't really use products, and that's coming from me, when I blew my hair, I didn't use anything in my hair. Yeah. Like I was lucky if I used a leave-in in my hair when I did a big blowout. Um, so now to have kind of three stylers. So I try to bring little travel size bottles of shampoo and conditioner. And then I have my um, curl cream, my flaxseed gel. And I, I love my mousse and my foam, as I had mentioned. I noticed, this is probably one of my favorite random tips that I've picked up along the way. I noticed that there's not a ton of travel size mousse and foam containers. Right. They, right. Why? I don't know, but yeah. there's not. I think Innersense might make one, but they they're do. really not readily available. Uh -huh. um, but the type that I use is not made in travel size. So I found that if I just take the top off and pour the liquid into a jar, and then I'll keep the pump top packed up in the Ziploc bag, and then I'll put the pump top into the little travel jar and pump it out. So I can still use exactly what I want without having to go buy maybe a different brand just to empty the bottle and get my favorite product in there. So just kind of a little hack that I've learned. So that's what I'll do if I'm uh, packing up some of my foam. And then of course I bring my diffuser. If I forget my diffuser attachment is actually not the end of the world because I do something called hammock diffusing for the most part. So by having my hair kind of scrunched up on a towel anyway, I don't, I just kind of keep the dryer far away. So, I mean, it's, there's nothing really magical about what I'm packing up. <laughs> it's pretty are you, straightforward. Are you taking your silk pillowcase or satin scarf or something to protect your hair at night when you sleep? Yeah. So I permanently keep um, a satin scarf, a really big one. I keep it rolled up in, in my suitcase at all times. I never take it out. It always stays in there. So I do tie that around a pillow. And then when I check out of the hotel, I just pop it off, roll it up and toss it back in my suitcase. So I'll take it out when I get home to wash it, but then it immediately has a permanent home. It lives my in suitcase. the suitcase. It is your travel yeah. scarf. Yes. It's my travel scarf. I have travel invisibobbles and travel claw clips. Like they just kind of stayed bundled up inside of the mesh pack on the inside of the suitcase. I love that. Do you take a towel too? I always forget the towel. I get there and I'm like, I don't have my microfiber yeah. towel. <laughs> um, do I, you know what? I don't think I do. I normally just grab one of the shirts that I have. I, I usually have like a couple of yes. shirts I pack for, that I sleep in. Mm -hmm. So once I have a shirt that I maybe I've already slept in, or I know I'm not going to end up using it, I'll just grab the shirt and do it. Yep. Um, but yeah, I'm definitely, that's another thing when you talk about following strict curly girl, like I, there's st several things that I still abide by and like, I will not put a standard towel on my hair. It is frizz city and it ruins everything. So yeah. yes, just use a t-shirt if you forget. <laughs> that's a really good tip. A, a, a sleep shirt that you slept yeah. in that you're not. Yeah. Yeah. Genius. What is the best piece of advice that you would give someone who is just starting this? What would you tell yourself three years ago when you started this process? Um, I still tell myself this because I get a little bit crazy. Um, as I'm sure you, you'd be kind of being on the side where we're very fortunate and that um, we work with a lot of companies and they like to send us products. But I'm a creature of habit and I like to kind of stick to a routine, especially when I found something that I really like. I just, I kind of stick with it. And it's hard to peel me away from that to try 
something different. However, when somebody comes out with something new and it's flooding all of your social channels, all you want to do is try it. You're like, oh, I yeah. wonder what that smells like. I kind of wonder what that texture is like. I wonder what that yep. would do to my hair. Yep. So the number one thing that I would tell people that I do tell people and I still tell myself is if you're just starting out, focus on application technique. You don't need all of the products. There's a million out there. And by the time you get all of those, there's going to be more coming out. You're going to want all of those. Your wallet is going to hate you for it. So yeah, I just, what I did, as I mentioned, I, I dedicated at least six months to, to trying this um, before deciding to fully commit to it. So for the first nine months, I had one set of products that I had purchased and that's all I used. So I was focusing on how I'm applying it. Am I raking this in? Am I using praying hands? How wet is my hair? Is it damp? Is it soaking? Um, you know, am I scrunching out with an oil or am I scrunching out with a foam? So I think just trying different things um, in terms of application instead of stressing so much about the gazillions of products that are out there is going to save you a lot of money and it's going to save you a quite a bit of anxiety. So just kind of look into the, they're free things to do is, you know, am I raking my fingers in my hair or am I just pressing product into my hair? Um, How did you keep track of what your hair responded well to and what it didn't like? Instagram. <laughs> so the entire reason my Instagram page got started is because I, as I mentioned, I went down that um, Pinterest rabbit hole, which navigated me over to some profiles on Instagram. And then I decided, okay, well, I'm just going to kind of privately, I didn't tell any of my friends or anything. It was just meant to be kind of an online journal for me to just post a picture of my hair. I typed up the products that I use. I might say a couple of things in there that I did different or what um, didn't work. And then uh, it kind of progressed from there. So that was kind of the the main thing that I worked on. I think to just eliminating or adding one thing at a time. So instead of being like, oh, this wash day routine didn't work and then changing everything. Well, everything. maybe it was just the gel that you used. It had a lot of aloe and it flash dried your hair or maybe you put way too much conditioner on your hair and you didn't rinse all of it out. So just modifying like one little thing at a time and then making note of that. For me, I did it digitally and it turned into something I didn't expect it to. Um, here we are now. So uh, I would just say, take it one thing at a time, focus on application technique. Don't stress about buying everything that's out there. Well, Allie, thank you so much. Oh, I finally oh. remembered the question that I forgot. Oh. <laughs> what made you go from your blonde waves to brunette lusciousness? Yeah, thank you. Um, the amount of effort it takes to keep blonde hair when you're not yes. naturally blonde is insane. Um, it, it was a whole process. My hairstylist and I have been talking about it for over a year where I have this, this is my natural color aside from some of these highlights. These highlights are actually just the blonde underneath that we kept out and yep. then just kind of toned it down. But it wasn't just about the health of my hair because at the end of the day, I want healthy hair and that's my goal, but I want my hair to feel like me and I want to wear it with confidence. So it needed to kind of fit what I was feeling at the time. So the blonde I had had forever, probably 10 plus years. And it just oh, became wow. a lot of, a lot of effort, a lot of money, not just in um, the blonde maintenance with the color, but Olaplex three treatments. Um, I've tried the Curl Smith bond cell that worked great too all of the purple shampoo and purple conditioners. I've even tried making my own out of, um, I think it's butterfly pea flower that I was using. And oh, I'm, it was, cool. yeah, it was fun, but it just, I mean, the amount of effort and I, it was definitely a learning curve even after it, I kind of transitioned it to brunette because it is a lot healthier now. It feels very different, but I went from really high porosity hair that was damaged and bleached and the cuticle was just blasted open but I was making it work to yeah. now I'm going to more towards like half my hair's medium porosity. It's like a completely different head of hair where yeah. suddenly the products that I swore by before weren't working. And I was yeah. like, wait a second, they're I way too protein heavy. <laughs> yeah. It was definitely a, a transition. That is so cool. That is really interesting. Yeah. I I've had this hair color the whole time, but I've always wondered when people go from the bleach, which tends to be, you know, people go from bleached to not being bleached and yeah, everything changes when you do that. Yeah. And I mean, we were very careful in the way that like the different types of dyes that we chose, we chose a demi-permanent color so that 
if I had a moment of awakening where I was like, oh no, I just need to be blonde again. She could yeah. very easily pull that back forward oh, without so needing smart. to, yeah, to just not needing to re-bleach everything. So, I mean, I get a lot of comments on, you know, my social channels. So did you go lighter again? No, it's just faded and I'm due to get it touched up. <laughs> There's so much blonde underneath, especially for those who are just kind of joining me on this journey at this point. They're like, oh, you used to be blonde. I was like, that's been about two thirds of my journey is me being blonde. So this is me still learning this. And, you know, that's why I'm still posting and sharing what's working because I think a lot of people do go from bleached to um, kind of a more neutral, um, natural color uh, where it is darker and maybe don't think in advance of, okay, well, how is this going to change in terms of the types of products that I'm using as my hair grows out and gets healthier? Yeah, absolutely. All right. Well, thank you, Allie, so much for coming on and thank you for having me. Your wavy curly wisdom. We really appreciate yeah. it. Don't forget to check out the description box down below guys, follow Allie everywhere. You won't be sorry. And that is it for this interview. All right. Thanks so much, Courtney. I appreciate you having me. Thank you. Bye. Bye. All right, guys, that is it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. Y'all know the drill. Go check out the links in the description to follow Allie. You won't be sorry. She is a lot of fun to hang out with on the internet. And don't worry, if you missed any of the past Curly Girl interviews, I have created an entire playlist of all the Curly Girl interviews all together. Don't worry, it's gonna show up in the end screen of this video. So if you want, you can go back and check them out or see which ones you missed. Anyway, thank you guys so much for hanging out and watching this series. We love y'all. Thank you. This has been a lot of fun. Let me know in the comments down below, should we keep doing this? Cause this was really just a series for a season when I was going to be taking a break and snuggling my sweet baby girl because I'm very pregnant right now. But at the time of you're watching this video, she's here, she's in my arms, I'm snuggling her. Anyway, are y'all interested in seeing some more Curly Girl interviews? If you are, comment down below who I should talk to. All right, guys, I'll see y'all in the next one. Bye.